the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Okay. Remember the word of God who is God. The word of God who is God. Jeremiah 1, 4 to 5. Jeremiah 1, 4 to 5. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. The Word of God, who is God, who then became flesh. Jeremiah 1, 4 to 5. No, that doesn't say Son of Man, Douglas. Stop adding the word Son of Man, please, for the love of Christ. Jeremiah 1, 4 to 5. Then the Word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Then the Word of the Lord came unto me, saying, I'm going to repeat it three times. Then the Word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. See, you guys didn't catch it. Who now came to Jeremiah speaking to Jeremiah? Post Jeremiah 1, 4 to 5 again. Don't give me the word Jesus. Give me what's in the text. What's the text say? Jeremiah 1, 4 to 5. Can, I'll, I'll give you $10 million if you show me the word Jesus. Jeremiah 1, 4 to 5. Post it again, brother. We're waiting for Protestant. Poor guys having a hard time today. Slower than usual. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the, in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Wow. The word of God appeared to Jeremiah, and the word of God said to Jeremiah, I created you in the womb, and even before I created you, I had already chosen you to be my prophet, set you apart to be my prophet, which is why I created you. The word of the Lord is saying this, but according to John 1, that's the word of the Lord that became flesh, became Jesus Christ. Now let's read Jeremiah 1, 4 to 10. Jeremiah 1, 4 to 10. Let's read it all in context. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. I, the word, formed you in the belly, I knew you. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I set you apart. I, the word, and I ordained you a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, Adonai, Yehovah. So notice, the word of God is God, because Jeremiah calls him God, right? <clears throat> ah, Adonai, Yehovah, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said, see, the word of the Lord is the Lord. When the word speaks, God speaks. But the Lord said unto me, say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith Yehovah. Now watch this. The word of the Lord, who is the Lord, who is God, the creator, appears in human form, a visible form, with an outstretched hand. Because notice verse 9. Then the Lord put forth his hand, touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, Yahweh said unto me, Behold, I put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day... <clears throat> Set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build, and to plant. <whistles> now read verse 11 so you have no doubt it's the word of the Lord. Verse 11. The word of the Lord, who is the Lord, who is God, who appoints people, who empowers people, who is with them to accomplish his will, who creates them. Jeremiah 1.11. Now watch here. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, the word of the Lord speaks. He appears in visible form. He has a hand. He appoints. He sets apart. He empow empowers. He remains with. And he creates. Sure sounds like John 1. Did you guys catch it? 
So how did God the Father speak to the prophets, to the Israelites? One of the ways that he spoke to the prophets, to the Israelites, is through Jesus Christ, who appeared in the Old Testament as the word of the Lord and the angel of the Lord. In fact, the word of the Lord is the angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord is the word of the Lord. Why? Because what is an angel? A messenger who delivers God's word. What is the, the word of the Lord? A messenger who delivers God's word, who reveals God's word. So the word of the Lord is the angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord is the word of the Lord because that's simply two different ways of speaking of the same person. The divine person sent by the Father to speak on God's behalf, to make God's will known to people who happens to be God, who then becomes Jesus. I love Jeremiah 15, 16. <laughs> that, why are you doing that first last? That was the other passages we're going to use. Okay, Zechariah 4, verses 8 to 9. Exactly how Darius, I'm sure you missed these Bible classes, don't you? God willing, when I come, I'm going to be doing weekly classes, so I expect you guys to show up, man. We'll find a place. Pray for that, please. God, release me. Then my daughters will come and join me. Zechariah 4, 8 to 9. Guys, let's see if you catch this. Thank our brother Protestant. Zechariah 4, 8 to 9. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, man, how many times does this word of God show up? The word of the Lord came unto me saying, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hand shall also finish it. And thou shalt know when Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel does what I tell you, Zechariah, when Zerubbabel does what I tell you, then you'll have no doubt. The Lord of hosts sent me unto you. Sent who to him? Zechariah, I'm going to prophesy. Zerubbabel will lay the foundation of this house. And when he does, then have no doubt that I was sent to you by Yahovah of hosts. Who's speaking? Who's telling Zechariah, when my word comes to pass about Zerubbabel, then you'll know the Lord of hosts, Yahovah of hosts, has sent me to you. Who's, who's speaking, folks? Did you catch it? Protestants getting tired of posting these verses again. One more time. But wait, folks. How can the word of the Lord speak to Zechariah? How can the word of the Lord tell Zechariah, the Lord sent me to you, if the word of the Lord is not a person distinct from God? So did you see these examples? The word of the Lord is not simply God's voice or command or scripture. The word of the Lord is actually a person sent by the Lord who speaks to people who claims what only God can do. Like he told Jeremiah, I, the word, created you in the womb, Jeremiah. I appointed you to be my prophet. I am with you and appeared visibly and touched his mouth with his hand. In other words, in John 1, when John said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John wasn't introducing anything new. Any Jew living at the time of John would have said, Amen, John. We know that. In the beginning, there's the Word. He's with God, distinct from God, sent by God, who appeared to our ancestors. We know him. The only new thing that John added was, oh, yeah, the Word became flesh. They'd say, wait, 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 wait. What? What? Wait, 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 John. You're telling us this word that appears in the Old Testament that we're reading about became a flesh and blood human being? Yeah. You're out of your mind, John. No, he did. Who is he, John? The one you nailed to the cross, Jesus. Whoa. John, you're telling us the word that appeared to our ancestors, the word who spoke to Abraham, the word who accompanied Jeremiah, the word who came to Zechariah, the word who creates, the word who gives life, the word who saves, the word who empowers his servants with his words. That's Jesus Christ? Yeah. You got it now? I want to give you two more examples, and then I'm going to show you that God the Father spoke by the Holy Spirit. Okay? So God the Father in the Old Testament spoke to the prophets and to the Israelites 
by Jesus, his word, his angel, and by the Holy Spirit. Okay? Two more examples. Are you ready? Two more examples. You ready for two more examples? Am I boring you with this? Okay. Genesis 15, verses 1 to 3. Let's break it down in two, two sections. You know, someone said something interesting. Dave Hoxton. What did you say, Dave? You're kind of upset that it took you all these years to finally learn this? You see how disgusting the state of churchianity has become? Genesis 15, verses 1 to 3. After these things, read with me. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision saying, there goes the word again. The word of Yahovah came to Abraham in a vision saying, fear not, Abraham. I am thy shield and thy ex exceeding great reward. Wow. Again, huh? And Abraham said, sovereign Lord, Adonai Yahovah, Lord Jehovah. What wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus? I have no sons, no heirs. So what do you, now notice the word is now called God. So he knows this word is his God. My God, what are you going to give me? You left me childless. Watch verse 3. And Abraham said, Behold, <clears throat> to, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. Now watch this. Watch this. Verses 4 to 6. Guys, I need your attention. 4 to 6, because I want to watch. I want you to watch verse 5. Verses 4 to 6. Genesis 15, verses 4 to 6. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Here the word again appears. This shall not be thine heir. Your servant won't be your heir. But he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. I promise to give you a son. Guys, pay attention to five and six, though. And he, the word, brought him, Abraham, forth abroad. The word took Abraham outside and said, Look now toward heaven. Guys, what is the implication here? What does it mean that the word brought him abroad, took him outside? That means the word appeared visibly in visible shape inside the tent where Abraham was. Abraham was in the tent. The word appeared in the tent in visible form and said, Abraham, come on out. Come out because I want to show you the stars. Look at the stars, Abraham. Re read five with me. And he brought him forth abroad and said, look now toward heaven. So he's standing visibly. And he's seeing invisibly. Look now toward heaven. And tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And said unto him, so shall thy seed be. Now notice why Abraham was justified. And he, Abraham, believed in Jehovah. And he counted it to him for righteousness. Wow. The word of Jehovah appeared to Abraham visibly. The word of Jehovah appeared to Abraham in the tent. The word of Jehovah made a promise to Abraham. I will give you so many sons, they can't be numbered. The word of Jehovah took him outside to see that's how many sons you'll have. And then when Abraham saw the word speak to him and make a promise, Abraham says, I believe in you. And then the word justified him. Guys, did you catch it? Abraham was justified by believing in Jesus Christ, who appeared to him before he became flesh. Hmm. Let that sink in for a moment before we move on. Jesus has always been there in the Old Testament with the Holy Spirit. Always. Send his dog on his merry way. Jesus has been there from the beginning with the Holy Spirit appearing and making the Father known. Clear? I'm going to give you a final example. But before I give you the final example, pay attention because I need your feedback. We're going to read about Samuel. Samuel was entrusted to the high priest Eliezer. Guys, follow with me. Samuel was entrusted 
to the high priest Eliezer. Guys, you got to listen here. That means Eliezer taught Samuel from his youth the written word of God, the law of Moses, told them about the history of the people, and told them about Jehovah, right? So did Samuel know the written word of God, and did he know about Jehovah since his youth when he was committed to the trust of Eliezer to work in the tent? So did Samuel know the written word of God? Did he know the writings of Moses and the prophets? Did he know it? Yes or no? So did he know about Jehovah? Did he know about Jehovah? He knew, right? So he knew about Jehovah. He knew the written word of Jehovah because he had the scriptures of the prophets. So he had the written word. The written word, right? Okay. Here's where it's going to get exciting. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. Let's post verses 1 to 5. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. Watch here, guys. Get blown away. Get blown away. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. Andrew, you following with me? Now, Andrew, as an atheist, how do you account for the supernatural consistency between the two books? 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. Read with me. And the child Samuel, notice, since a child, he ministered, served unto Jehovah. So he knew of Jehovah. He knew the law of Moses and the writings of the prophets. So he knew the written word. And the word of Jehovah was precious in those days. There was no open vision. Catch two things. The word of Jehovah was rare. And there was hardly any visions from God. Notice those two things. The word of Jehovah rarely showed up. And hardly any visions. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. Watch here. Three and five to five. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of Jehovah where the ark of God was. So it was night. They're asleep. And Samuel was laid down to sleep. Now watch this, folks. Okay. That Jehovah called Samuel... And he answered, here am I. And he ran unto Eli, because now Samuel thought it's Eli. The voice of Jehovah sounded like Samuel. Watch this. And he ran unto Eli and said, here am I, for thou calledst me. And he said, I called not. Lie down. And he went and lay down. Right? Now, why did Eli, Jeho Samuel think it was Eli calling him? Here's the answer. 1 Samuel 3, 6 to 7. Get ready to be blown away. Some of you already know this. Because we've taught this for years. 1 Samuel 3, 6 to 7. Here's where you're going to get blown away. 1 Samuel 3, 6 to 7. And Jehovah called yet again Samuel. And Samuel arose, went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I called not my son. Lie down again. Now why didn't he recognize Jehovah? Verse 7. Now Samuel did not yet know Jehovah, neither was the word of Jehovah yet revealed unto him. Bam! Samuel knew of Jehovah, but did not know him personally, because he could not know him personally without the word of God making Jehovah personal to him. Bam! He knew of God, read about God, but did not God know God intimately, because the word did not come to him yet. In other words... You need Jesus to know God personally. You need Jesus to know God intimately. You can know of God, but you can't know him intimately until Jesus, the word, makes him known. 1 Samuel 3, 7. Let's read it again. 1 Samuel 3, 7. One more time. Why did he know this was Jehovah? Why didn't he recognize the voice of his creator? Because the word of God had not come to him. Here it is, verse 7, 1 Samuel 3, 7, read. Now Samuel did not yet know Jehovah, neither was the word of Jehovah yet revealed unto him. That's why Jesus had not yet come to Samuel to reveal God to him. So Jesus finally shows up. Now it's time for you, Samuel, to know God intimately. That's why I'm here. So now 1 Samuel 3, 20 to 21. 1 Samuel 3, 20 to 21.
1 Samuel 3, 20 to 21. We're almost done. And all Israel from Dan even to Beersheba knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of Jehovah. And Jehovah appeared again in Shiloh. For the Lord Jehovah revealed himself to Samuel Shiloh by the word of Jehovah. Bam! So now God had sent Jesus to make himself known to Samuel. Wow. This confirms what John said in John 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and then the word became flesh, and confirms John 1.18. John 1.18. Let's read it. He was taught about God, surely, exactly. But now he knew God personally. Meaning, folks, you can be reading the Bible, going to church, and still not know God until you know Jesus, and Jesus comes and dwells in your heart. You need Jesus. Word of God become flesh. Son of God, born of the Blessed Virgin Mary by the Holy Spirit, come to me. Live in my heart. Make God known to me. I need you. John 1.18. No man has seen God at any time. Say any time. That includes Samuel's time. At any time. Samuel's time, Moses' time. None of them could have comprehended God except the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father. He hath declared him. Did you catch it? John 1.18 says, All of these prophets, the patriarchs, got to know God personally, intimately, fall in love with him as he was in love with them because the Son in the bosom of the Father sprang forth and came to them as the word, making God personal and intimate to them. You caught it? This confirms Matthew eleven twenty seven. 27. Matthew eleven twenty seven. 27. Andrew, what do you think it is so far? Exactly. We need to know Jesus personally and intimately. Matthew eleven twenty seven. 27. Watch here. All things Jesus speaking delivered unto me of my Father. No man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son. No one can know the Father except the Son, and to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. How could Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Moses, and Samuel know the Father if the son wasn't there making the father known to them. So I established that one of the ways, one of the ways in which God the Father spoke to the prophets was through Jesus, right? Have we established that? Through Jesus, right? Jesus is that word of God in the Old Testament, the angel of God in the Old Testament who became flesh. We know him as Jesus of Nazareth. 